Hey, this is Dan with School of Sheets. We build custom smart sheet solutions, and today I'm gonna to show you how to automatically detect and remove duplicate values or duplicate rows from a smart sheet database. So what we have here is essentially a simulated tracking sheet. It's meant to perhaps be a situation where each row is a potential sale that you could make. There's some different columns here. It's not necessarily super important what specifically is here, but there's just some different data points that you could play around with. And one of the points that you'll see later is you can use whatever columns are in your sheet to determine how you want to basically consider what should be determined to be a duplicate. So I'm going to actually show you this in action so you can see the way it works. And then I will break it down and explain it. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy row three here and paste it and what's happening it is conditionally formatting this dark red color that's intentional there's a duplicate flag that checks but notice that the row it was copied from there is no duplicate flag checked I'll explain this a little bit later you can see that update just came in the additional job 3 is gone and what happened is there's an automation that whenever a duplicate is identified it moves the row to this sheet here, and we can actually see it just came in here. So now let's explain how this works. So essentially what's going on here, um, I'm gonna turn off this automation for the moment just so I can explain the different parts of the sheet. I'll explain the automation as well, it's a very simple one. What's more technically here is the formulas for the duplicate identification. So again, we use job three, I will copy it again and since the automation is off, it's not going to move. And so now let's talk about how this is working. So there are a few really necessary parts to this. I'm gonna hide the stuff you don't need to actually use, but I'll talk about that later. What's crucial is you need to have an identifier, and this is going to be a unique value for every row. And this is basically how you're telling Smartsheet this row is a unique row, right? In other words, if the same value and identifier appeared across multiple rows, those would all be considered duplicates. So for example, we have these two job threes, and in this specific case, what I've done is I've used a formula to combine the job name and the date that the row was submitted, and that's my value for du identifying duplicates. You could do anything that you want. I mean, I'll even show you. So you could do something like joining literally every single value in your sheet. You don't need a delimiter, but I will put one in just for sake of organization. And now, you know, the, the identifier, this would still work if you copied and pasted it, or if you had a true duplicate. Uh, the point here is that there are some cases where only, you know, maybe one or two or several columns need to be considered for a duplicate. And there are other cases where perhaps every literal column is going to be need needed to be considered, but you can choose. And the last point I'll make is it doesn't need to be a formula. Um, if something like just the job name was specific enough, you could use that. So the second thing I have here, I have a row ID. This is necessary to be in the default format. And what I mean by the default format is whenever you make the row ID column, it will assign a number, an integer, to every row that get created, gets created and it will increase by one. I will show you how to add that in to a sheet. I'm gonna use this other sheet, insert column right, auto number, and you're not going to modify any of this. You're just going to put it in the way that it comes in by defaults. We also have this created, this actually isn't necessary to have in your sheet. It's necessary in this exact case because the identifier is pulling in the value from the date submitted column. And the date submitted is just a simple uh, date only formula to extract just the date portion from the created. So I am indirectly using the created column in my identifier formula. But again, you don't need this. You could use the job name and the status. You could use the assigned to whatever. So lastly, we have our duplicate formula. 
And what's unique here is that this is only flagging the duplicate values outside of the first instance. And the way that this works is it's an if statement nested around a count ifs. So I'm going to do it backwards. I think it makes a little more sense that way. So looking at this count ifs portion, so maybe I can unhide some columns so it's a little bit easier to see because that will expand now. Okay, so this count ifs, it's going to, of course, count the total number of rows that meet the criteria that you define. And in this case, we have two criteria sets. One is based on the identifier column, and the second criteria set is based on the row ID. So the first thing that's happening is we are going to count, or consider for counting, all of the rows where the identifier is equal to the identifier in this row. So again, in this row, it's job three comma eight, 28, 24. That also exists here in row three. So these two rows, I'll highlight them just so you can see, are being evaluated within this first set of criteria in the Countess formula. The second part, it's similar, but just a little bit different. It's going to be looking at the entirety of the row ID column but then the difference is it's going to only include in the count those that have a row ID less than or equal to that in the row. So I'm going to open up a, this one so you can see the flag still. So the reason this one is flagging is because in row 7 we have a row ID of 21 and in row 3 which has the same identifier we have a row ID of 14. And again, we have these two identifiers to work with, but we're only going to count the ones where the row ID is less than or equal to the row ID in the particular row we're looking at. So 21 is, of course, less than or equal to 21 because it's the same value. And then 14 is also less than 21. So that means that this count ifs is returning a value of two. And now if we look at our if statement, it's looking to see if the count ifs portion is greater than one and two is greater than one of course so that's why this flag here is checking conversely in row three same idea but since 21 is not less than or equal to 14 the count ifs portion of this formula is going to return a value of one and since you know one is not greater than one the duplicate flag is not checking so that's all that is actually needed to make this work. I've also just added a couple other things here because I think this stuff is cool. I'll quick, more quickly explain it because it's not necessary to actually have. I've made two duplicates of job three. One, I have this original ID column where if it is a duplicate value, it will show you the row ID that it was duplicated from. So the row ID of job three in row three is 14. So that's why 14 is appearing here. And additionally, um, in this duplicate IDs column, for any row that has given rise to duplicates or that duplicates exist of, it's going to return the IDs of those. So the last part is the automation. So let me show you this. I'm going to activate it and open it up. So again, this is extremely simple automation. It is going to detect when the duplicate column turns to flagged, and then it's going to move rows to this ADR duplicate capture. This is just a sheet solely for the purpose of taking in these duplicate values into it. So now that we've done that, I will show you this one last time. Let's delete these and let's just go ahead and copy a bunch of stuff. And now we have all sorts of duplicates in here. We're going to wait a second for our automation to kick in and we should be left with our original six jobs. And just like that, again, we can see from the, you know, you can, the, the created date, the row ID, these will allow you to ensure that you do have the original ones that you put into the sheet. And then in here, it probably just needs a refresh. Now we have all of these uh, lovely duplicate values that are out of our hair. That's the end of this video. Hopefully it was helpful.
I'm going to actually make this solution available for you to use yourself. Keep an eye out. I'm going to start releasing these as sort of templates that you can use. Additionally, if you found the video helpful, please like it and subscribe to the channel for future updates. And also, if you're looking for help with your Smartsheet environment, School of Sheets is a Smartsheet partner firm. We do consulting for small, medium businesses and large enterprises, the entire product suite, the premium applications. If you have a project you need some help with, um, there's a link in the description box below to fill out a brief form and then schedule a time to chat with me. It's no pressure just to see uh, if it's a good fit and if we can help you out. So that's all for today. There is going to be a follow-up video on how to actually delete these automatically with Bridge. So keep an eye out for that. Again, subscribe if you're interested in learning how uh, to automatically actually delete rows so you don't just build up values. Okay, well, have a great day and thanks for watching.